If you own a 3D printer, then you probably know that sometimes they can be a real pain in the <coughs> That is, unless you have the right tools. This video is based on the tools that I use myself personally and I find extremely helpful. And hopefully you'll find some of them helpful too. Some may be familiar to you already, others may not. And the best part about it is that most of these tools are under $20. So let's get into it. The soldering iron, or for the Americans, soldering iron. I think of this tool like the magic wand of 3D printing. It allows you to do a whole bunch of stuff, such as installing heat thread inserts. It helps with support removal, especially when they're in really hard to reach places you can't get your cutters in. It fuses parts together, and it even helps with filament splicing. Plus, you can always use it to give yourself third degree burns, which is fun. So I'd recommend getting one with a holder. The one that I have is probably the cheapest and nastiest one I could find on Amazon, but surprisingly, it still works really well. However, I'd recommend getting one that has a digital temperature display as this little dial is a bit finicky and you can't really tell exactly what temperature it's at. So just make sure that it comes with an assortment of tips for various different use cases, as well as a holder for the unit while it's not in use and some cleaning elements. Plumber's tape, recommended by Mario and Luigi. This stuff is great for creating air or watertight seals on things, but I mostly use it for when I don't have the right screw, as it allows you to make a screw much larger than it actually is. So if you need to screw something in and the hole is just too big, just wrap some plumber's tape around the screw until it's large enough to screw in nice and snug. Just make sure to wrap it clockwise to ensure it doesn't unwind itself when you screw it in. But if you don't want to ever have to worry about having the wrong screw, I'd just get a screw kit like this with an assortment of sizes and lengths, and it will save you a trip to the hardware store and a lot of frustration. Thread Locker Speaking of keeping your screws nice and tight, Blue Loctite is great for doing just that. The blue version means it is removable if you ever need to take the screw out again, which is handy if you apply this to screws on things that require maintenance or disassembly. Often due to vibrations from your printer, they'll eventually start to unwind various screws around the machine from the hot end, the print bed, or the frame itself. So if you have a printer that is prone to the screws coming loose, using some Loctite on them is a good way to make sure that they'll stay in place and prevent printing issues. It only starts to cure upon contact with metal and takes around 24 hours to set. Just keep in mind the max temp for this as applying it on screws that will get too hot will render it useless and could potentially damage something. Screwdriver set. I got this set about 15 years ago and I'm pretty sure they don't even make it anymore. And it has helped me put together more projects than I can remember. Having basically every type of screw bit is super handy as different projects require different screws. And it's nice not needing to have 120 individual screwdrivers laying around. It's also really handy having the extra tools that it comes with, like the tweezers and the X-Acto knife, as these are also super helpful things to have. It may be a good idea spending a little bit more on these as getting higher quality bits will mean they'll last longer and won't break as easily. This is the modernized version of my current kit. And if they're still using the same quality bits as they were in the past, then it will last you a really long time. Pliers. Pliers are great for a few things, such as changing stubborn nozzles, removing stubborn filament, and taking off stubborn supports. Trying to do these jobs with your hands is sometimes impossible and can also cause injury. So it's a good idea to get a set that includes a bunch of different plier ends that vary in shape and length. The mini sets are perfect as most of the things we'll be using them for will be quite small. And this also means that they'll be cheaper. I also have these Nipex pliers. They're kind of a mix between pliers and a wrench, and they are amazing at pressing something into something else or holding something that varies in size, and they're just a super helpful tool to have. They are a little bit more expensive than your standard pliers, but they're extremely high quality and will probably last you a lifetime. Also, I thought I'd do a quick shout out to the flat edge cutters here. Most printers come with a free pair of these, and I would say that they're one of the best tools for removing supports delicately and without damaging the plastic underneath. Speaking of useful tools, what if you could make your own? That's where a company like PCBWay, today's sponsor, comes in. If you've ever designed a custom tool or part that you want 3D printed, these guys can help bring that idea to life. Just drag the file into their instant quoting system, choose from one of the many materials, and you'll get their quote straight away. I recently had them make me some door hinges for my P1S, and the parts came out looking really awesome. Check out PCBWay using the link in the description for $5 off your first order. Now, back to the tools. A blowtorch. 
I use this all the time because like the soldering iron, it can do lots of things. For starters, it helps remove blemishes and scratches from your prints. Take this cube for example. I printed this in silk PLA and this material seems to scratch very easily. All I need to do is hit it with the torch quickly and like magic, it disappears. This has saved me many times as I print lots of these skulls and I have a tendency to bump them sometimes. Now this will only work for light scratches though, so if the mark is too deep, then you're out of luck. The blowtorch is also great for removing stringing from a print, as these tiny strands are very difficult to remove by hand. The blowtorch makes short work of it and doesn't damage anything, just as long as you do short bursts and keep the flame moving. So this is only something I found out recently, and that is that the blowtorch also removes bed adhesive from the bottom of prints. So while you're removing the stringing, you can also remove this as well with the same tool. It's also super cheap to refill. I got this four pack of butane gas canisters for $10, and that will probably last me for the next 10 years. This blowtorch has an adjustable flame, which is really helpful for not overheating the plastic you're using it on. It also has a visible gas level, so you know when to refill it and how much is left. Bed adhesive. If you print with difficult plastics like ABS or ASA, or your print bed has issues keeping things stuck, then using a bed adhesive is a great option. I used to use Magigoo, and although it works really, really well, it is really expensive. So Bic actually sent me out theirs to try out, and it works just as well as Magigoo, is much cheaper, is a little bit bigger, this solution is water soluble, so all you have to do is just get a rag with some water on it and it'll wipe right off. Alternatively, you can actually make your own with some isopropyl alcohol, PVA school glue, and some water. And making one bottle of this solution will cost you around $2. I have a full video on how you can do this in the description. Super glue. Eventually, you're gonna need to glue stuff together. I would highly recommend using this glue by JB Superworld. I don't know what sorcery they did to this product, but the nozzle never clogs, it's fast to dry, and the lid never gets fused to the bottle, at least in my experience. So you can use it time and time again until it runs out. Fire suppression. This funny looking light with a pressure gauge on one end is actually the T-Series automatic fire suppression system by Blaze Cut. It requires no maintenance and lasts about 10 years. I bought this when I got my first Ender 3 and kept seeing videos of people's houses burning down because of them. Now this is pretty expensive and there are much cheaper alternatives out there such as the Wham Bam Cloud or the AFO Ball and they seem to do a decent job at putting out fires around printers. But from my research, the Blaze Cut T-Series did a much better job at putting out a fire, hence the higher price. But if you can't afford that price point, which to be honest, I don't think I would be able to anymore either, I'd at least get some of those AFO balls as they will be better than nothing. With the constant improvement of 3D printer safety features like thermal runaway, products like these become a little less crucial, but there is always a chance that something could go wrong. And I would prefer to have some peace of mind that if it does, I at least have some form of protection from it. Air blower. Now this is super handy to clear out all the poop and filament from your printer. An air blower is better than using a vacuum cleaner as it gets into more of the nooks and crannies of the printer. And this one even has a light to help you see and two adjustable speeds. I prefer an air blower over a can of compressed air as it's rechargeable, doesn't leave any residue on the thing that I'm using it on, and it has a number of accessories to make cleaning even easier. Isopropyl alcohol. I use 100% IPA to clean my build plates between prints. It's great for removing tiny bits of leftover filament and light oils, but <laughs> only to an extent. Even at full strength, it can still struggle to fully remove the oils from your hands that have gotten onto the build plate. In a previous video, I actually tested this by touching the build plate in a number of spots with my thumb, printing over the top of it, then cleaning with IPA and printing again. The marks were reduced, but some of the oils had been smudged around the center instead of being completely removed. I always use 100% because it doesn't contain any additives like bittering agents that can leave residue and lead to poor bed adhesion. Yes, a 100% solution will evaporate faster, Maybe not that fast, but as long as your plate isn't too hot, it will last long enough to clean with. It's also worth noting that overusing IPA can wear down your PEI surface over time. That's why I recommend giving your plate a proper wash with hot water and dish soap every now and then to kind of reset it. As long as you avoid touching the plate too much, 100% IPA works great for quick cleans between prints. But in the end, the best way to do it is with some good old fashioned dish soap. 
Now I planned on showing you a few more tools, but I feel like it will make this video go on until the end of time. So let me know if you're keen on seeing a part two, and I'd love to hear what your favorite tool is in the comments. Or you could head over to my new 3D printing Discord server to share your thoughts over there. I'll be making it a paid server very soon, so get in for free while you can. Hope this video has helped. Thanks for watching.